brain. So when the call came out, the only thing Jesus did was kind of hit the night what was in it. All right? So we have to understand that, and we have to be prepared for that also. So another thing that Jesus said, which is incredible, which we have to look at, is I will make you become fishers of men. He didn't say, I will make you fishers of men. I will make you become. He's going to teach and preach them. Open your hearts, people. He's going to teach and preach us the same thing. Isn't that an encouraging thought to all of us? Because it means that when Jesus calls us into the ministry, he assures the responsibility. Jesus assures the respons assumes the responsibility to teach us everything we need to learn in order for us to fulfill the calling. Does everybody understand that? He's upholding us. He will assume the responsibility and teach us what we need to do. And yes, we do yield to him, but we need to let go of all of our accessories and follow him. He will equip us, he will use us, make us unique in his sight to fulfill that fishing for us to cast our minds up. Now Peter and Andrew were casting their nets in the sea. That's what they knew how to do, and that's what their abilities were. Now Jesus teaches them to cast nets for men. We read in the Gospel of Matthew that Andrew became the disciple who brings people to Jesus, even as he brought his brother Peter to Christ. And it's the same thing with us. He's equipping us to do the same thing. He's not picking one of us in the congregation. It's all our responsibilities. Peter becomes the great evangelist. And on the day of Pentecost, he preaches to the gospel of 3,000 people. Is that incredible or what? God's not asking you to preach to 3,000 people. He's asking you to reach out to one person. One person a day. One person a week. He's asking you to reach out. That's all he's asking you to do. It's very simple, and it's not hard to do. James and John were doing the same. We're doing something else when Jesus called. They were actually mending their nets. That was a skill and ability that they did. The Greek word for mending has the idea of equipping, preparing. Somebody to do what? Fish. Mend your nets, people. Set them out there. God is equipping you to do this. Jesus te teaches us to mend our nets as fishermen. So we may bring in everybody. The lost, the uncared for. It doesn't matter who it is. Cast out your net. See what you bring in. You know, in our kitchen, we have a toaster and we have a coffee maker. We plug them into the same socket. But they do two different things, don't they? This is the same thing here. We all plugged into the same socket. I call it the Jesus socket. We all get the same power here, but we're all not going to do the same thing, are we? He equips us all differently. We're called to do the same thing, but we're all going to do something different. Just like the appliances in our house. We're all plugging into the same thing. Plug yourself into that Jesus something. Now, have you ever asked yourself why you are like you are? Usually when we ask this, fortunately we're looking at uh, comparing ourselves to others or we're ashamed of, of something that we do. But I tell you what, with the Almighty Sovereign God, it's not an accident that you are why you are. It's not an accident that this church is here. The people prayed. The people sought after God's will. The church was built. God is here. God is with us. And God has gathered us here to do what? Come on, we're doing fishy stories. Fish. We're here to fish. We're here to fish in Delray, New Jersey. He's not asking us to fish all over the world, even though we're supposed to. We have a small pond here. Are you throwing your line into that pond? Are you throwing a net into that pond? All this can be hard. He's equipping us with all these powerful tools. And all he's asking us to do is to look at the gospel, read the word, and start fishing. The bottom line here is all the power to live the Christian life comes not from you, comes not from me. Where does it come from? It comes from the all in God. He's equipping us. He's revealing us to help him fish the people. The third part of Jesus' statement, fisher of men. Disciples became fishers of men. Jesus taught them to catch a different kind of fish, though, didn't he? It wasn't a fishy fish, it was a man fish. So we got two guys here. They've never fished before in their lives. They 
decide that they're going to rent all the equipment, the reels, the rods, the wading suits, the rowboat. They even rented a big SUV. They rented a cabin in the woods. They spent hundreds of dollars. They get there on the first day. They go out in a little boat. They go out on the second day. They catch nothing. They go out on the third day. They catch nothing. <laughs> A whole week goes by, and the last day that they're there, they finally catch this itty bitty little sunfish. Only maybe six inches. All depressed, they pack everything up and they're driving home, and they're not talking to each other. And one guy holds up the fish and he says, Do you realize that this one lousy fish cost us $1,500? The other guy looks and says, Wow, I'm glad we didn't catch any more. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fine line between fishing and standing on the shore like an idiot. Ask yourself, am I actively fishing for men or am I standing on the shore waiting for something to happen like an idiot? Jesus, by how he lived his life, gives us an example after example of what it takes to catch men. If we want to reach others with the gospel, if we need to go where they are, we need to touch the concerns of everybody's lives. We need to be ready to live and explain the gospel and its relevance for everything connected with Jesus. All of which is a continuing challenge, isn't it? It challenges us every day. We need to pray for each other with each other. We need to help each other. We need to understand each other. And we need to get out in the mission field and preach the gospel. We need to look at each other's generations. We need to look at each other's ancestry. We need to look at our backgrounds. We need to look at our differences. And we need to go and preach where those differences are. We need to understand how to preach those differences. What are the concerns of the people you live with? What are the concerns of the people that you work with? How can we as the church spread the gospel? What are you doing to share the gospel? How can we support gospel. We need to learn how to fish, brothers and sisters. We need to learn how to catch fish. And we need to do it today. Only Jesus can teach you how to fish. Do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to be a fisher of men? Let go of everything that keeps you behind. Let go of all your accessories and follow Him. Allow God to work in you, through you, and be uniquely you. And he will work with you. Let him teach you to catch fish. Don't be the one that got away. Don't be a fishy story. And listen to this. God does not have a catch and release program here. Okay? Don't be the one that got away. When Jesus catches you, stay in the net. I guarantee you it will be a good place to be. Get into Jesus' net. Stay into Jesus' net. 